was always in the hands of amateurs. News was, uh, through most of its history, through most of human history, was not a spectator sport. It was a sport that we all participated in. We all gathered news and we all told news. We, you know, at a marketplace, at a campfire, when we met each other on paths. That's how human beings are. They're great exchangers of news. I argue in a history of news that it's built into us this, uh, uh, it's a survival factor, this, this search for awareness, this search to know what's going on, particularly to know about violent things or things having to do with sex and reproduction. What the change was that about 150 years ago, it became possible to make a business out of selling news. The invention of the steam press made it possible for newspapers to appear more quickly in much greater numbers. The telegraph gave journalists a big leg up on, uh, on getting news from afar faster than anybody else. And then reporting developed at newspapers. The idea that you would have some people on your staff who would actually go out and seek news. This was a relatively new idea in uh, the early 19th century in the United States, a little bit earlier than that in England. And, and with these changes, it became possible for the first time to sell news for people. News became a valuable commodity and you had the rise of these giant mass circulation newspapers over the 19th century. The uh, changes in uh, media and journalism over the last century and a half, starting with the uh, steam press, the telegraph, uh, photography, then radio, then television, uh, were mostly changes that seemed to uh, create larger audiences. Situations where one communicated to many. And uh, you know, a, a small newspaper down in lower Manhattan here uh, might have had a thousand readers. But once the steam press got going, that became uh, 10,000 readers, and then it became 100,000 readers, and then it became a million readers. And te with television, it could become millions of readers watching uh, local newscasts, and particularly network newscasts. And so you get these larger and larger mass audiences, and the chances for any one of us to participate in that news system as a teller of news uh, and also as the subject of news uh, became uh, rarer and rarer, fewer and further between. And that's the crisis now because that's the business that's ending. This idea that only professionals, that only large corporations could sell news is ending now. We're seeing with the rise of the internet and its various permutations and manifestations and progeny that, uh, uh, that, that everyone really has access to news now. I can watch the same live feed on CNN or the same video camera and watch Obama's news conference myself and write up my own account of it. I don't need a reporter from the Washington Post standing there taking notes on it. I can, uh, you know, I can see the oil spilling out in the Gulf. I can hear uh, on YouTube, I can hear quotes from people who are being affected by it. All, you know, more and more of this stuff is available so that the advantage professional journalists had over the rest of us, over amateurs, is shrinking again with the internet. And this is mostly a wonderful thing. You know, now we're all plugged into one giant marketplace, one giant meeting place where we can all uh, do what human beings have always done, exchange news. Except now we're beginning to do it again as human beings used to do uh, without always having professional journalists intercede. And we can now exchange news one to one or one to ten of our friends. And we can all do it. And news can, once again, be about us through a video we post on YouTube, through uh, you know, our boring comments on Facebook, on Twitter, of what we just had for lunch. But we are, once again, as we would have been in a, a preliterate society or in an agrarian society or uh, in the early days of colonial America, uh, once again, we're tellers of news, subjects of news, and seekers of news on our own. <laughs>